So for my ladies that might be a little overzealous, yeah. this might help you because you have to kind of, you know, manage yourself. So I would say work on the mindset about it. Think about the positive sides of it. You still have yourself, your own life yeah. that you can work on simultaneously. Yeah, while you're getting to know someone without throwing yourself into it, which is what people tend to do when they have so much access to a person. Because for example, uh, my wife and I, we would read books together. <laughs> same? Wow. Yes. The, the, the same, my brother, I, I tell you, <laughs> Yeah, we, we we said you know we're going to be different but you know we're clearly now clearly we, we we aren't totally different there's somebody else on the but we we normally do a, a a book about relationships and we do a bible study on the same night we're trying mm -hmm. to cover that at, at the same night yeah. and daily i send her a, a prayer over mm -hmm. us our family our kids and then i share scripture every day that we you know Sometimes we will, you know, talk about it during the day, but she'll always send me feedback on it. So yeah, that's how we, we, we stay, stay connected. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that it is easier and more beneficial actually for the woman to move where the man is. And I will say why some women might get offended by what that. I'm saying, say but you talk about it. Let's this go. is from my years of experience being in the situation as well as being a coach for over eight years. So having a lot of other couples also prove this right. I think it's better for the man to be set up because I mean, traditionally he is the head, right? Mm -hmm. He is probably going to be, if not the sole provider, like the main provider. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that right? If he's already established, like go where he's established and he's comfortable to move around and do things. Mm -hmm. I think that helps him in his position, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other side of it for the woman. Long distance relationships. Can they work? Now, nah, you know, I've been there myself. I have some special guests with me today. We're going to discuss long distance relationships because there can be challenges to it. I get people that inbox me all the time about what does it take for long distance relationships to work? I mean, shoot, some people say I can't even trust the people in my own city, let alone somebody in another state. <laughs> so I have some special guests with me today. She is the love guy and is the CEO of Love Coverage and also serves as the lead coach. She showed women how to believe in love again and attract the love experiences they've always dreamed of. And he is the CFO of Love Coverage and also serves as coaching support for their community and membership, Bravehearts Community. Let's show some love to Deanna and Will, the Washingtons. How are you doing this evening? We're doing great. Yeah, we're doing awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you both for taking some time out of your busy schedules. I know uh, life can get busy. So thank you once again for taking this time to jump on and discuss these long distance relationships. Because as you know, I've been in one. Uh, yes. It can never be easy. I want to jump into this. How did the both of you manage the challenges of maintaining a long distance relationship? You can go first, <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> well, I think it was important for us to establish and maintain a connection. Um, when you're not physically with a person, I think you have to be more intentional about spending time together. So there was a lot of FaceTiming. You know, I mean, we got creative over FaceTime, basically like sharing our entire days with each other sometimes. Oh, this is how I make my coffee. Oh, this is how I make my tea. Oh, you know, this is what I wear to bed. Oh, this is how I go to bed. Oh, you know, so you just start to share little pieces like that and you find ways to connect that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, go ahead. No, I was I was just going to say we, we also found a uh, connection in in some things that were, I guess you can say, kind of non-traditional, unlike text messaging, oh, emailing, yeah. FaceTime. We found, you know. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast 
and they said something that was really, really good, or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. On a few sites, little trinkets that, you know, like a touch bracelet was one thing we found. And I think that was one of the good, you know, ways of staying connected with each other because we were both working at the time. And uh, it was just a little trinket that, you know, as you go through your day, if you tap it a certain many number of times, we had the meaning already made out. That was the message we got during the day, even when we didn't have time to get on the phone and talk. So that it was, was just the little things. That was really cute. So we both had a bracelet. And it's like, if you tapped it, mine would light up. So he would tap it when he was thinking about me and mine would light up. And it's like a really cute thing because it would be like random throughout your day. And then your <laughs> bracelet's going off. You're like, ooh, <laughs> he's thinking about me. So, yeah, that was creative. It I was. I was, it was. I, 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 didn't, I would never forget that one. I, I had so many friends of mine and, and just being in certain places, people would see it light up. It's like, oh, what's that? What's that? That's 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 my fiance just saying hi. <laughs> like, oh, that's nice. So it worked for us. Yeah. That is cool. Like who who came up with that idea? Because that is genius. Oh man, I have no idea, but I can't remember the site that I saw it on, but I was just surfing around Facebook and it came up as an ad. Mm -hmm. And I went on the site and started looking for look because it was talking about, you know, staying connected over the miles. I don't, and I'm just like. Oh, this is nice. Let's take a look at this. So we tried it. it. They had a few different things. Like they had one where both of you got a lamp. Yeah. So you could keep the lamp at home. And whenever the person like turned their lamp on, yours, yours would go off. On, yeah. But the it's called a bond bracelet. Yeah. B-O-N-D. Bond bracelet. And we thought that was cool because you could take it with you. So there was mm -hmm. no limitations. It's like I'm out about, you know, handling my business and... Oh, I get a little light up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was cute. Yeah. Yeah. So being creative, that's, yeah, that's that baby. I almost forgot about that's that. That's one of the keys. <laughs> yeah. That is cool. So who who has the most accurate story about how you both met? I don't know <laughs> if it's the most accurate. I'm just enthusiastic yeah. about telling it. Okay. Because <laughs> there was some small bits and pieces. Me, I was kind of like in and out of the, you know, the, the the initial time that we met each other, but she was fully in, and she'll tell you the story, when we, and you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean by being fully engaged with <laughs> what was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we, neither of us were like looking to date. We were both like on the tail ends of marriages that were ending. Um, so neither one of us were thinking about like anything romantic. Mm -hmm. um, I had come across a gentleman online on Facebook who was going through a difficult time. Um, he had lost his job and he had a wife and a few kids and they were like living in a hotel and he was basically like making it week to week. Mm -hmm. um, and it just tugged on my heartstrings. At the time, I wasn't in the best of financial situations to be able to give to him. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I had a very healthy network. I used to be a rap artist. So I had like a lot of fans that still followed me and things like that. 
So I just reached out to my network on Facebook and I asked if people wanted to donate money to this family. It was like around the holiday time, like around Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I mean, overwhelmingly, I didn't tell anyone this, but I was trying to match the donations. So like once it got to like $200, I was like, okay, God, that's that's (laughs) enough. Like that's enough. But I mean, it was pouring in. I mean, we got to almost like $2,000. People wow. were donating shoes, like all gift sorts of cards. stuff, gift cards. Yeah, everything. And he happens to be one of the people that donated. Mm-hmm. Now, he is like one of many. So it's I still didn't know who he was, but I made it a point to go through. And everyone that donated, I personally sent them, you know, an thank inbox you. like, thank you. God bless you. I hope God multiplies what you gave, you know, just that was my little thing. And when I reached out to him, he, you know, he was very nice back and like, Oh, well, God bless you for doing that. Like nothing, still no flirting, nothing. And the very next day, um, because I was collecting the money through like cash app at the time, he sent me a personal cash app. Like God put it on my heart to bless you for blessing others. Mm I was like, wow, okay, you know, that's really cool. Like, still nothing. He didn't send me anything flirtatious. He, nothing. It was completely like, you know, just very thoughtful and and giving. And from there, just randomly, maybe every few days or something like that, one of us would send like a scripture, Mm -hmm. something of encouragement. And I don't know why, honestly, we just started doing it. And It honestly was really innocent, didn't lead to anything. It just would be like, oh, thank you. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. That's thoughtful. Have a great day. Went on about our business. Then I think like maybe two months later, I was actually leaving. I was living in Virginia and I physically left the marriage with my kids, everything and moved to Dallas. And I was driving. So it's like a 19 hour drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm like falling asleep at the wheel. I'm like, so I look at my Facebook and I'm like, who's online? Like, who can I talk to to keep me up? And I saw that his little uh, indicator showed that he was online. And I'm like, oh, he's positive. Like, he, I don't know. Maybe he'll talk to me. Yeah. So... (laughs) (laughs) So I like message him and I'm like, I'm... I think I said, like, I'm on a drive and I need to stay up. Would you mind talking to me? And it was like late. Mm -hmm. This is totally out of like my character first, like reaching out. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's like late. So it's like weird hours that could be misconstrued. (laughs) And I did that. And you were just like, of course. And then he calls me and we just talked for hours, for hours. Um, yeah. yeah. And I I think that is the start. Still, there was like no flirtation or anything, but I think that's where like our friendship really kind of started awesome. yeah, from absolutely. there. Mm. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say I, I was motivated by because I had driven cross country from East Coast to West Coast three times by myself before. So I understood how it felt to be driving at night a distance like that. So I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. how many times did I say and this was before cell phones. So it's like, <laughs> who else am I going to talk to? So absolutely. So I understood that. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That is <laughs> amazing. And Diana, you said you used to rap before, right? Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> because you look familiar. Yeah. yeah. Um, My rap name was Shelby Raw. Um, I went to Morgan State University in Baltimore. Mm. So when I was doing music, it was in like uh, the DMV area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? It was, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it was a few, <laughs> a few years back in my other life. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what strategies did you use to stay connected and keep the relationship strong? Because, for example, uh, my wife and I, we would read books together. <laughs> same? Wow. Yes. The, the, the same, my brother, I, I tell you, <laughs> 
we 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 said you know we're going to be different, but you know we're clearly now clearly we 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 are totally different. There's somebody else in the but we we normally do a, a, a book about relationships and we do a Bible study on the same night. We're trying mm -hmm. to cover that at, at the same night. Yeah. And daily I send her a, a prayer over mm -hmm. us, our family, our kids. And then I share scripture every day that we, you know, sometimes we will, you know, talk about it during the day, but she'll always send me feedback on it. So yeah, that's how we, we, we stay, stay connected. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we did have guidelines too. Yes. Um, when we decided like, okay, we're going to date, like I'm, I'm interested in you. There's enough here for us to explore. We talked about not going longer than three weeks, three weeks without, yeah. without seeing each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was something that we stuck to. We yeah. were we were committed to that. There may have been maybe one or one two time. times. It was one time that yeah. we didn't adhere to the three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important too. If if you're considering a long distance relationship, just think about like your own parameters and standards, right? It may be different than everyone else. You may not need three weeks. For you, it may be six weeks. It may be eight weeks. It may be whatever. But I think having the discussion like, how are we going to stay connected? How are we going to make sure that we don't lose interest? Yeah. How are we going to keep it fun? Yeah. Um, so we built in travel as well. So it wasn't like, oh, every three weeks we just sit in a hotel or sit in a house. Some of it was, okay, this weekend, we're going to try this restaurant. Yeah. This weekend, we're going to spend the weekend doing a road trip. Mm -hmm. um, this week, we're going to take a vacation. Yeah. So we, we would always plan things out. And, and that's the thing, too. We kept up the anticipation yes. by always knowing what's next. What's next, yep. Absolutely. So it's like when we would be together, part of that time would be spent thinking about what's, what's next. next. Absolutely. And that was a way to like keep us engaged. Like when we really started missing each other, mm -hmm. then we would start, oh, well, we got the countdown to, well, yeah. <laughs> to whatever. And it would help us not to like miss each other too Absolutely. much. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because I think my wife and I, I think we maybe went, I think maybe a month maybe i think we went a month without seeing each other and we were just like oh my god <laughs> yeah yeah you know? so i i i totally get it what piece of advice can you give both of you for people who are they, they they're they're fearful of long distance relationships cuz they like i don't know yeah i really like him i really like her what would be your advice for them to, to help them to get over that fear? My advice would definitely be to be intentional about what you both want out of the long distance relationship, how you both going to contribute to making it work and have a plan that if something doesn't work, you're going to commit to making it work and, mm. and, and getting together to, to, to conquer whatever it is. If you feel that much for the person and you're, you know, that much in love, you'll find a way to, to get over any hurdle. Mm -hmm. But you have to commit up front to do it together. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, mm -hmm. I think I would encourage um, people to maybe switch the mindset instead mm -hmm. of going into it saying, oh, that's so hard. I don't do long distance, you know, and just already have all of these built up like roadblocks, yeah. I would encourage them to look at it as opportunity, right? Mm. So for me, I'm like, wow, this might be easier for me to manage because I can't get too clingy because he's not around. <laughs> so I can manage myself a little better. I can, you know, not be too thirsty on him because I'm a little limited. So for my ladies that might be a little overzealous yeah this might help you because you have to kind of you know manage yourself so i would say work on the mindset about it think about the positive sides of it you still have yourself your own life yep. that you can work on simultaneously yep. while you're getting to know someone without throwing yourself into it which is what people tend to do when they have so much access to a person yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'll add to it. 
share, share, and share some more. There's nothing wrong with sharing. I'm going to be here during this time of day, or me and the kids are going oh, to do that's this, so true. or I'm going to be at work, or I'm going to hang out with friends. There is nothing wrong with that. And I, and I had a, a friend of mine who was in a long distance relationship for almost four years, and he never proposed to the young lady he was in a relationship with. Um, they survived. <laughs> they ended up getting married. <laughs> but he said that was the hardest part was them remembering to make sure the other one knew what the other one was doing, because it's like you never know something could happen to that person. Yeah. But that peace of mind of knowing you're good or I'm good or I'm going to be here was he said that made the world world of difference. The distance hurt not seeing her going long time. But he said just just being that that part of sharing was was what made it work for them. That's good. Like for us, remember when we started like sharing locations, yes. you made sure like I didn't have an iPhone at the time. And he was like. Uh, we have to change that. Yeah. So <laughs> he no made brain sure. bubbles. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> he was like, we got to change that. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah. Like, so, you know, once we got the iPhones, it's like, okay, now we got FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? Like we have other capabilities and it's like, you know, I'm traveling at night and doing different things like yep. that. Mm -hmm. You know, I started putting my location on and letting him know, Hey, I'm going here. I'm going to be back around this time. So that also helped us to feel connected yes, with each absolutely. other and to build, start building just a deeper connection too. like, okay, I'm being accountable to him. I'm sharing more things about my life and he's doing the same thing. He made sure I had access to him all the time, all the time. Yep. and felt comfortable about it. So we didn't have to question like, are you with somebody else? Are you like, what are you doing? We yeah. kind of take that off the table. Yeah. From the start. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Mm, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> because my wife and I, we had on our uh, location. Yes. And we also, uh, we would do the Snapchat, like the live oh, videos oh, yeah. or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So we would, if, you know, if I was at work or if something cool was happening or whatever, I would just like Snapchat, like we would. So, yeah. yeah, at communication. Absolutely. Well, I think something we have in common because we were watching um the video that yes. you and your wife did, and I know you guys got married shortly, like you weren't dating long. Yeah. And I think what's important to state is along with being intentional, there was a clear path for a future yes. when we decided to do all of yes. this stuff. So that might be something to consider, to consider yeah. before you do a long distance relationship that's serious. Like we knew he proposed after three months. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it was nothing to give locations and do yeah. all of this stuff because there's already an established commitment. Okay, we're marrying. We've got to work out the logistics yeah. of where we're going to live yeah. and all this I stuff. Know, other stuff yeah. But we at least know we're going to be together. So there's no need to hide anything. There's no need to not have access. At all. Yep. So that might help too. Get, mm -hmm. get on the same page about future and where you're going. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you both brought that up because oh, you absolutely. could be in a long distance relationship and then a year or two pass, and you're like, well, "What are we doing?" You know? Yeah, yeah. no. Nah, get that, that out the way. <laughs> that is the per the perfect question, and and some people will turn it on themselves. But you you said it perfectly. What are we, we doing? doing? Yeah. It's not about what you're doing or what I'm doing. It's what are we doing? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So I kind of want to pivot just a little bit. Was there ever a moment where there was like trouble in paradise, like? Was there ever any kinks where things were maybe kind of rocky or maybe like, do you guys ever have a disagreement? Like, did you fall out during that time? And if so, <laughs> how did how did you manage that? Well, I don't think we ever fell out. We had mm -hmm. some rocky moments um, mm -hmm. because of difference of, of opinion, not being on the same page. Uh, something that I did that she didn't like or something that she did that I, we hadn't crossed that bridge of, of having the chance of having that accountability moment about it. And we just had to deal with it on, on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, I think those things were small though. Yeah, they I were absolutely. No, it wasn't think, nothing major. 
I think the uh, maybe most difficult times that we had involved ending our previous, previous situations. Yes. And dealing with those situations. It yeah. wasn't with us. No. We had great communication, yep. even when we had differing opinions, opinions yep. or things came up that we needed to correct. We were always able to say, hey, I want to talk to you about this. And we did. And it was no problem. It was when both of us were kind of going through court and All like that, yep. divorce and having to close those doors completely that it gets a little difficult because, you know, I'm going through something and he's not involved at all. This was like before him, yeah. but he has to deal with my attitude. <laughs> he has to deal with my fluctuating Likewise. moods. Yep. And then, you know, he's going to court and he's disappointed and I'm having to console him and having to really be a friend because at that point it's not helpful to either get jealous to like make it about yourself because really your partner yeah. is the one having a really hard time dealing with someone else that they're trying to cut ties with, but they still have business. They have to tend to until there's the full legal separation. So I think that yeah, was probably the most difficult thing for us. And I think, I think anybody would yeah. have a difficult time with going that. through that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that period because I mean it, it 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 was tough and nothing I wanted to do nothing more than to drag her into all yeah. of this this mess and I remember saying to her you don't know what I'm going through and her response was I don't but I'm gonna be here for you as you go through it yeah that kind of you know my attitude at in saying that kind of just subsided <laughs> real quietly <laughs> so I'm like okay <laughs> That's Absolutely. that's beautiful. And I love that because that can be challenges because same going through a divorce, trying yeah. to get all of that done and, and, mm. and you know, paperwork and, yeah. Yeah. Was, you know, I'm headed here. I got to go take care of this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so y'all y'all feel me. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, scary to remarry. You know, that's that's yeah. the brand. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> How did you both navigate having a, a blended family, especially going through long distance? And, and then how did you jail your families together um, when you were both together? Like, how was what was that process like? Oh, wow. Well, I, I can say this. Uh, I in my previous marriage, I had two grown. I have two grown kids. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, um, they didn't take it as well as I thought they would. Mm -hmm. And I understood that. And, 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 and that's why I say she is such, such a rock because she never felt any kind of way about it, but she was always um, willing to express and say, you know what? It, it may take time. Of course, me being my optimistic self thinking, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. She's like, there's no rush. Yeah. If you feel it's going to happen, it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but we're not going to, you know, let's not, you know, cause that, you know, to slow us down and, and continue to move forward, they will get over it. And I mean, she, she was right on because I think that same year after we got married, maybe six months later, my son's birthday, mm -hmm. I came up, he lives in Vegas. I went out and spent the weekend with him and just, yeah. we really talked uh, about a lot of the stuff that, you know, I, I, I know his mom was planting seeds and everything, but being able to sit with him as a man and just talk to him and really, you know, share some things with him, um, it kind of broke it. And matter of fact, we were in Vegas for her birthday and we tried to make a make time for him to meet her. But he he works long hours and we mm -hmm. we had our plans for that uh, that birthday weekend. So <laughs> we'll so he said, yeah, we will do it next time. Yeah. <laughs> so. And on my end, I came into the relationship with two smaller children. So at the time, I think what Sire was Three, three, yep. Three, and Shelby was five. Mm -hmm. And my stance on that was, you can't meet them until we're engaged. Yeah, yep. I had very strict, very strict, yep. um, like guidelines about that. I felt as though, for one, I never thought I would be divorced anyway, and divorcing yep. their father. Mm -hmm. And two, I just always felt like they don't need to be a part of dating. They don't need to see me with multiple men or trying to figure out my love life 
that is not for children to see. They should have a stable home and only meet a man who is going to be in their life forever. Yes. And when I explained that to him, it, he was impressed. Like, I love that. Like, great, we're on the same page. So once he proposed to me, mm -hmm. um, we introduced him to the kids, but we did everything in phases. Yes. We yeah. introduced him first as mommy's friend. Yeah. And he was just around and we spent time together doing fun things, making sure the kids were just comfortable, comfortable. having yep. someone around Absolutely. in our space and different things like that. And I think maybe two to three months after we introduced them, they started calling him bonus dad yeah. on their own. Yeah. yeah. We did not nope. tell them that nope. we introduced we we him as gonna, Will. Yep. Yep. And, you know, when they started doing it, he's like, well, do you want me to correct them? Or like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, let's go with it. it. They, from. they yeah, felt absolutely. that. So let's just go with it. And by the time we actually got married, I mean, at the wedding, yeah. Shelby actually did a speech and thanked him and called him dad. And it's been dad ever since yep, then. Ever since, so. Yeah. We just took a very tiered approach. Like we are like, this is our union. Yeah. This comes first. Mm -hmm. Let's take our time making sure that we are strong. And then we will extend outward, but we extend outward to the point that nothing outward impacts inward. That's right. Absolutely. It's it's always us first. Mm -hmm. We strengthen ourselves. We go outward. And if we have resistance, we just still strengthen ourselves and say, okay, we'll, we'll try it later yeah. or we won't, but we're good, you know? Yeah. yeah. I love it. That's wow. So many memories. <laughs> <laughs> just you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So who let's kind of talk about the, the logistics as far as who decided to move where and like how did all of that happen? Because that had to be a situation because that's something I think, you know, a lot of people question. They like, who's moving where? And so oh, what was that like? Well, I can tell you. OK, <laughs> I can tell you that we have a non-traditional setup, but I can I can explain that. But then I can say what I recommend other people do. Because right. I don't necessarily think what we do, people, other people, other can, people can handle. They can okay. Because um, for the work that he does, um, he was already on a contract, already like had to stay in his position for a certain amount of time. And he's still on that contract. So our um, way to deal with that was we just got two houses. <laughs> <laughs> We, you know, we're, we're blessed. Yeah. God has blessed us financially and um, we were able to do that. So we just travel back and forth between the houses. Like we'll spend a certain amount of time here when he's working, when he's vacationing, we'll spend it at the other house. Like, and we kind of just work that out yeah. for now. That's not forever. No, no, that no, is no. just while he has this particular assignment. Once that's over, um, he had already wanted to move to Texas before he met me. Yeah. Oh. And I'm in Texas. <laughs> so it kind of just made sense. He's, made I'm sense. like, do you want me to move where you are? He's like, no. Nope. <laughs> I wanted to move there. Like that to me is more of a sign from God that I need to move there. You're there. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll move there. Yeah, yeah, It'll yeah. be fine. So that's what we do. We kind of travel in between both places. We still have guidelines about how long we're able to be away from each other. Now it's like two weeks. Yeah, it's, that's what it's been lately. <laughs> now it's two weeks and we don't even do that most of the time. Um, so that's how we kind of balance that out. But for other people, yes, um, because I've been in another long distance relationship before, like for my first marriage, mm -hmm. I think that it is easier and more beneficial actually for the woman to move where the man is. And I will say why. Some women might get offended by what that. I'm saying, say but it. Talk about it. this go. is from my years of experience being in the situation as well as being a coach for over eight years. So having a lot of other couples also prove this right. I think it's better for the man to be set up because I mean, traditionally he is the head, right? Mm -hmm. 
he is probably going to be, if not the sole provider, like the main provider. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that, right? If he's already established, like go where he's established and he's comfortable to move around and do things. Mm -hmm. I think that helps him in his position. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of it for the woman, I think it's easier for us to make friends. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier as a woman to kind of get around, figure out the lays of the land. You know, I moved to Dallas. I already got meetup groups for us. We, we go here. We do this. Yep. He just shows up. That's it. You know, <laughs> when we come to Maryland, we're in the house. He <laughs> has nothing laid out for us. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> But that just demonstrates what I'm saying. Like women, I think, are a little bit more adaptable. It's a little bit easier for us to find community. So when we need help, we can find other moms. We can find other groups. Mm -hmm. Men I are more, so you know, kind of to themselves. They might have the couple homeboys they've had for years. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little more difficult, and I think if you want a man to be in a leadership position and for him to feel comfortable, yeah. it, it might behoove you to um, go where he is comfortable. Now, he says, nah, the money is where you are or I got another job lined up, then cool. Yeah. But usually it doesn't work like that. Usually the man is set up in his position. He probably been there a couple of years. He got thing he knows where he gets his car done his barber like all of that stuff yeah. that's a little harder yep. for men to reestablish. women they get there they're gonna find the nail shop the hair <laughs> within a week so i think it's just it, it works out a little bit easier for everybody if you do it that way i agree mm -hmm. that's good that's because our situation was 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 vice versa i i actually relocated Oh, okay. Because my wife has it's it's six of them, like brothers See? and sisters. Yeah. yeah. So it's, that makes sense too. Like it it logistically, mm -hmm. it wasn't as easy for her to uproot. Yeah. And you know, for us, it's kind of the same thing too. The kids <coughs> are already in school. Yep. They're mm -hmm. all of this. So I offered to move, and he's like, wait a second. Yeah. The kids already been through moving, mm -hmm. readjusting. Yep. Doing all let's of that, that, let's yeah. not do that to them again. And I don't want to be the cause of that. Like, you know, you have family there. Let's. Yeah. So he was also thinking about Absolutely. the adjustment of the kids and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. good because a lot of people, they struggle in that area. I don't oh, yeah. Know. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they they never talk about what the plan is and who's going to move until after they get married, and it's like, okay, yeah. what are we doing? <laughs> uh, you you got to have those conversations in the beginning, Absolutely. like like soon. And if you're afraid to, you don't need to be moving further. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like keep it light. Then if you can't have those type of conversations, you just live in two places. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know how that works for you. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. No, I, I totally get it. I want to talk about, can you give us a little bit information about everything that you both have going on with the business and the coaching and stuff like that? Let's talk about that. All right, go ahead, coach. Okay, coach. Thank you. All right. So, I mean, I've been a coach for over eight years, almost nine, but full time for two years. He actually retired me from my day job so that I could focus on the business. And it has been the best thing ever. Amen. The best thing ever. I mean, just the joy. And I mean, primarily the clients are women, but um, I have a, a, a very great male following. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men tell me I do a really good job of understanding them yeah. and communicating like the ways of the male mind and things like that to the women. So I have a lot of male supporters as well, like in our community and things like that. But primarily we have a Facebook group. The love attraction community is free. Um, and that's kind of like our entry level, like come on in, oh, get to know us. We go live every Monday. I teach a lesson and then there's an open Q and a from there. We have a paid membership. 
So for those that like my style, they, they want assistance from like a male perspective as well, and they know they want to get to it, they join our membership. And we do a monthly lesson in there, a monthly accountability call, um, challenges, all sorts of things. It's a really fun environment for people to learn and grow in. And that's like the main part of the business. Yes. Um, the sub part of the business is I actually um, service high profile clients. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a whole, oh, yeah. whole different beast. <laughs> yeah. um, they require a different level of support mm -hmm. and but it, it's lucrative. Yeah. <laughs> it's lucrative. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you find out that they're really regular people. Yes. Who, do, do, who do just need situation. some support that people don't consider. When I told him I wanted to work with high profile clients, he's like, why? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, because no one does. Yeah. No one thinks about the support they might need being in the public eye, all that they have to manage and relationships in themselves are just difficult. Everyday people are having problems with them. So tack on, you got a lot of money, you got a lot of influence, like they need some yeah, support they, and they're yeah. probably not asking for it. Yeah. So well, that's, they're, they're getting it from people who they're paying. That's to, true to be too. Them. So and who are paying to, right. they're paying and they like make money off yes. of them. Cause I mean, they pay us too. Yeah, but, but we don't make money off of like what they're doing. No, like we are paid to assist them they so get, that they, they a have service. a better quality yeah. of life and better relationships. So mm -hmm. that's the other side of our business. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I have a love attraction journal. Yes, yes. And um, you told me to stop calling it DIY. What do we yes, call it's it now? Not, it's, it's, not <laughs> it's it's it's. Um, a roadmap. It's a roadmap. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a roadmap, Coach. It's just, it's a guided journal, and 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 I tell her all the time. I remember when she got the vision for it. Um, the numerous days we sat and just brainstormed and talked, and I got to the point where I realized I need to just shut up and let all of this come out of her. <laughs> and it started coming out, and it started coming out, and it started coming out, and then finally she got to a point, and I was already thinking that she's like. Honey, I really need to you to separate from it. I need to focus on getting this to the finish line. I'm like, I'm so glad you said that because I was already thinking that <laughs> you need to focus on yeah. because these were all her thoughts. These were her ideas. These were this is what God was giving her to to, to put in the journal. And I think it was maybe a week and a half. We yeah. I said nothing about the journal. I said nothing about the writing. It was just enjoying our lives. And she finally yeah. said, I'm done. Yep. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. So, yeah. absolutely. so we have that. That's, you know, our kind of flagship um, product that anyone can buy. And it literally helps you to kind of dig deep, think about like your childhood trauma, your relationship patterns, mm -hmm. but then it gives you the guided prompts to create your new reality about love. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it different than all the other journals. All the other journals are just telling you to report about your day yep. and report about what happened to you. No. The first part of the journal does help you unpack that so that you have room to dream. But it and is that, yes, it, it does hit hard. hard. I have people that tell me it takes them a year to get through it because some of the prompts are so hard hitting mm -hmm. you know they're things people don't want to face but yeah. once they do it yeah they're like oh my goodness i think completely different about love now i'm ready wow so, yeah yeah i love it that's beautiful well i want to make sure i have everything linked up in the description below so yeah. everyone can get in touch with you get yes, your indeed. products your services all that other good stuff so I want to thank you both for taking some time out of your day to be guests and talk about this whole long distance thing because yes, it's been a hot topic lately, at least in my world. And people have been asking me questions. It's been going crazy on Twitter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so people have been yes, talking it. about that. And, and and I'll tell, I'll remind people: watch your video, you and your wife's video, because we watched it and we saw a lot of similarities. But what we saw most importantly was. Two people committed to making it work yes. and watch how God brings it all together and it and it flourishes. And keeping God at the center. Absolutely. We love that because that was instrumental for us as well. 
we weren't doing anything that God wasn't involved. And nope. we continue in our marriage this way. And that's why, I mean, we just celebrated our one year anniversary. We're still in the honeymoon phase, yeah. you know, we're, we're yep. still extremely happy, like getting along and just building a life together in a very healthy way. So God is definitely the glue. And, and we have to share this. Our, our Barbara, oh, yeah. he, uh, just before we left to go for, to get married in, 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 in Paris, we were just, he was just cutting my hair and we were just talking like we normally do. He said, I want to share something with you both that mm -hmm. my father says to my mother all the time. And he's like, it might sound a little corny, but people have he's like, my father always told, tells me that me and your mom are keeping the honey mm -hmm. in the moon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we use that all, all the time and we tell yeah. him, look, wow. And so she coined our anniversary trip, our honeymoon anniversary <laughs> trip. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we, we definitely We're endeavor to do that. that, keep the hun honey in the moon. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. That's good. I might have to steal that, but you know, yep, you can. You it's can. Like, we share it. We freely really share it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you hit all those links in the description because I only bring the best on this scary to me, Mary. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, share this with someone. And as Will said, you can also watch the video of my wife and I when we talking about our relationship and long distance. And also, if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And also leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd we'll love to hear from you all. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.